My name is uh, Gregory Farrar. I'm an exhibit assistant and a part of the team here at the Oakwood Cemetery Chapel. My story began at Oakwood in February of 2019. The part of that was doing genealogy and site research for my family's Austin roots. And I was able to find an online map of the different sections of the cemetery. My great-great-grandfather and my other family members were buried in what was known as the historic colored grounds. For Austin being such a busy, bustling city with so many changes going on, the grounds here are extremely quiet and extremely peaceful. It's almost like this whole area is kind of uh, trapped in time. It offers kind of a solemn place to, to really think about things. One of the things that we try to do is talk about the lesser known truths of the grounds, specifically how this section here was originally part of the segregated section with crossover with the visitors that died while passing through Austin, as well as the poor. I took it upon myself to go a little deeper. Let's go through our database and get their names or individual records so that we can illuminate who is here as best as we can to not only get the numbers, but to get the names. The names behind the numbers connect us to that sense of humanity. So the end goal was not only to produce that list, but to compare it with a GPS marker survey that took place over the summer of 2019. And that survey basically looked at all of the remaining headstones here in section 4-CG you would get a much better picture of the scope of who's not accounted for in terms of markers. Following long-time database research, which currently has roughly 25,150 uh, records, some that are duplicates, some that need to be cleaned up, I began the work in February to essentially go through the entire database. And when I first began, it was simply anyone who had the unique identifier as being buried in Section 4 CG, um, I took them and put them in, on a list. Of course, when I started going through the list, I noticed that there were a lot of other unique identifiers attached to records. So basically everyone who had a unique section or location identifier, we wanted to also look at those as well, um, just in case they offered certain clues. The combination of research and time between multiple people has been hundreds of hours, if not thousands of hours and it's extremely tedious work, detail-oriented work, just because of the, the sheer scope of the number of records. All records within the database so far, excluding duplicates of the people identified as buried in 4-CG, or known as the historic colored grounds, were roughly 2,731 individual records. Identified as buried in the Strangers' Grounds, roughly 818. Identified as buried in the Paupers' Grounds, roughly 133. Identified as buried in the Mexican Grounds, roughly 244. This does not include everyone with Mexican, Hispanic, Latinx, or Tejano names buried throughout the cemetery. Identified as buried in the turn of the 20th century city grounds between 1892 and 1920, roughly 132. Identified as buried with no section or location data, roughly 1,242. Of these, at least 111 records mention the person being black or a person of color. Identified as buried in Section 5, or at, near, or by the perimeter fence line, roughly 98. Identified as buried in New Sim, or New Cemetery, 
roughly 264. And finally, those identified as having miscellaneous locations or descriptions, including missing reinterment information from disinterment records, lots that do not appear on the known map of Oakwood and require more research and solving, roughly 86. Over the summer of 2019, staff members Chad Williams and William Delgado conducted a GPS marker survey of Section 4-CG. The survey returned roughly 300 markers. The picture begins to become a lot clearer. At least 2,731 recorded burials, a little over 300 surviving markers. Was the system ever documented? Was a map ever produced? Did reconstruction and the rise of Jim Crowism play into this poor record keeping? Many prominent black families bought lots here in the late 1800s to early 1900s, after which some people believe the grounds were full. When they buried my great-great-grandfather on December 19, 1916, there is a record that the remains of an infant were found and moved to a different lot. That's after my family bought the lot and buried our first relative here in 1910. The name of the infant and the name of the lot they moved the remains to are not in the database. This is a window into the frustrating work that doing genealogy research as a person of color can be. A huge opportunity to bring acknowledgement to the people who are here and the people that have been here and the people that you would not know are here simply because of the lack of markers it's an important opportunity to be able to engage with the public, to engage with visitors, because this is a part of Austin's history. And it has a deep meaning for not just the people who are related or have friends that are buried here, but this should have deep meaning for, for Austin. We look forward to completing the audit of these records and making those available to the public. Our plan is to tag all those records to burial sites on the digital map.